You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. When you look at LSU's offense this year, there's high expectation once again. And there should be. There's plenty of talent. I mean, you're never going to lack for talent at a, at a skill position at LSU. We know that, and you see that again. You even added to it when you went and got Xavier Thomas, C.J. Daniels out of the out of the transfer portal, um, Kyron Lacy back, the whole host of guys that you have, you know, behind that Chris Hilton, Aaron Anderson. We could go on and on and on. You know, but what's odd is that the expectation is still so high when LSU is having to replace the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. And, I mean, that is the situation that LSU is in. Not only the Heisman Trophy winner, the best offensive player in college football last year was Jaden Daniels. I mean, without him, where is LSU, especially with the defensive struggles that they had? His importance could not actually be really, like, I mean, it was immeasurable. That guy's gone. Along with Brian Thomas, along with Malik Neighbors, like, what you actually do lose is massive. So that's why this was really, really interesting to me because that we just haven't we haven't talked it. But it's oh yeah, you know they're gonna be good on offense, whatever. We've kind of glossed over it. So ESPN, this was a, a staff report from them. They looked at their top twenty-five teams um, and ranked the future at quarterback for each team. And LSU, I'm sorry, this was not the staff report. This was from Adam Rittenberg. So Adam Rittenberg went through and ranked the future of quarterback for each team. And LSU came in at number eight. And that's significant because they moved up from where they were last year. Like it just further drives home what what we were just saying to lead off this segment, how they are losing Heisman Trophy winner, best offensive player, and everyone still feels great about it. Like for you to lose that and to go up from twelve where they were preseason last year to eight is massive. So what they um what they note, Garrett Nussmeyer obviously taking over the reins, but they note A.J. Swan coming into the transfer portal from Vanderbilt and um, bolstering uh, bolstering your depth there. Ricky Collins, who will now have a second year in the program under Joe Sloan. They even mentioned Colin Hurley, who you know was a high four-star recruit and, and comes in out of, um, out of high school. And it's just so crazy to think about. We don't have to rehash the entire history of, of quarterback at LSU. But the contrast is just so damn real that you you can't just gloss over it. LSU is a quarterback graveyard. We know that. Even after Joe Burrow left, I mean, a large part of the next offseason was, oh man, is Miles Brennan going to you know, How's Miles Brennan going to do? What's that going to look like with Miles Brennan? Our center? You're not doing that now. You just go, okay, Garrett Nussmar's going to go out there and do well. And you brought in A.J. Swan, who's a very capable backup. Ricky Collins is going to be in the second year. You know, he's, he's got talent. Colin Hurley's here. Oh, by the way, Bryce Underwood, the number one player in the entire country, is a quarterback. He's committed to you next year. You're just rolling with it now. It's wild to think that that's where you are, but it is. And it's even more evidenced by Adam Rittenberg's ranking there with LSU moving up losing all of that. So let's talk about that quarterback room a little bit. And I know many of y'all are. I am too. I'm fired up, fired up to watch Garrett Nussmeyer take the reins of this offense, especially after what we saw in the bowl game. I can remember sitting in this chair, filling in for Matt. It was the week of the bowl game, like leading in quote unquote game week right there. And we talked an awful lot about Garrett Nussmeyer that whole week here on AFR and, and what it would look like 
for him? What did it need to look like? What was fair expectation? And you had two sides of that argument where a lot of people wanted to see him go out there and absolutely dominate and just put up the show. And, and that's what you were expecting. And I was kind of sitting there to myself going, okay, look, yeah, but I mean, of course, I want to see that, but you still have a full spring to go through. You'll have camp. Like There'll be plenty of time for development. I wouldn't read too, too much in to what he puts up there. He just needs to go out there, play a steady game, lead LSU to victory. And what I constantly said was not make the catastrophic mistake in that ball game. And Garrett Nussmeyer did, I mean, he went above and beyond that. 395 yards, 99-yard game-winning drive in that game. He was awesome. He went out there and had the game that most people expected him to have and, and, and said was fair expectation, to go out there and just dominate. And he did it. But the thing that was most impressive to me was he didn't make the catastrophic mistake. Garrett Nussmeier is going to throw a few interceptions. That's fine. The Wisconsin game, like what you saw from him in that game is the prototype. That's the blueprint for him to be incredibly successful in 2024 at LSU. 395 yards. Yeah, I get it. He's not going to throw 400 yards every game. But 395 yards, three touchdowns. One interception. And when that interception happened, yes, it was right before halftime. It wasn't a great decision. Into, into coverage, safety came, you know, over the top there, uh, or really right through. Uh, Brian Thomas got the pick. You were trying to go score right before half. That's going to happen. What was more impressive than that is when you're still behind, he leads you on the comeback in crunch time, in tight spots, and doesn't make that mistake. That's huge. That's growth that you can build on here now in spring and then in fall camp. And then in the opener, when you're all ready to go against USC in Vegas. So love that. When I look at a guy like AJ Swan, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, that's a guy who's got close to 4,000 yards passing in his career in, in the two years at Vanderbilt. He has experience in the league. So if something happens to Garrett Nussmeyer, you have a, experienced backup that you can hand the ball to and say, okay, go, like, go, go right the ship for us. Go take over, go do this. It's something we talk about with the, uh, with the New Orleans Saints so much is having that experience backup. They did it with Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, like it, on and on and on, you know, the list. And it proved to be very valuable for them. I think LSU is in a great situation and you had to do that. You couldn't go into it with just Ricky Collins and, and Colin Hurley. Not to say that they're not talented, not to say that they can't have some type of impact uh, in their time at LSU. I hope that they do. But you had to go get somebody, and you got someone you feel very comfortable with in, in A.J. Swan. Not for him to come in and, and really you know compete for a starting job. Maybe he pushes Garrett a little bit, but definitely to be that solid veteran backup piece that, uh, that ultimately you need. So you love that. It's just... They're in great shape. And that's something that we have not had the luxury of saying around here often. And I know you all know that. But I would just reiterate the point one more time. Have you noticed how we've all just rolled with it now? We're used to it. And that's a great thing. Because none of us could have foresaw that just six years ago. And here you are. It's just, yeah, Garrett's got this. What are they? Let's fix the defense. Garrett's got this. Sample size, small, but shows you that he does. I mean, it's, you, you look at the career for a guy like Nuss, 1,700 yards, just about 59% completion. Like, those are all great numbers to build on. For him this year. And what you saw in the bowl game. Is the great launching point. That you wanted it to be. So onward. For the LSU quarterback room. Which ESPN. Despite losing the best offensive player. In college football. Despite losing the Heisman Trophy winner. In Jaden Daniels. Moved up. Four spots. In its stability and potential. For the year 2024. Number 8 LSU. Up from number 12 last year. That's awesome, and I can't wait to see it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. 
Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.